This is a tutorial on hyperparameter optimization. In particular, we're going to talk about some of these parameters, like in k nearest neighbors, we have the number of nearest neighbors. That can be changed. That's an option that we can adjust to improve the algorithm, improve the accuracy on a validation step. So let's just talk about how we split up the data into these different sets for training, validation, and testing. So if we have our data set, we're going to slice that up into three sets. The first one is the training data. The second one is going to be a validation set. And then the third one is a test set. And the reason why we do this is because these hyperparameters, we need a set of data that's specifically set aside to help us improve those selection of those parameters. Now, in the case of k-nearest neighbors, that's going to be the number of nearest neighbors. But if you look at something like a neural network, you can have a number of, number of hidden layers, the number of neurons, and then as you train that and fit that, you're going to get a different result for your training and for your test set. Okay, but we have this third set that we set aside, and that is our validation set, specifically for these hyperparameters. Okay, so that's for the hyperparameters. And then the training one, we're going to be fitting the parameters. So that's going to be like the neural network weights or biases. Okay, so that's going to be the weights, uh, the bias values, and the hyperparameters are going to be something like the number of layers, okay, the number of neurons. and other things. So these are typically things that we specify, but as we get closer towards uh, something called auto ML, okay, auto machine learning, where the algorithm is actually aware of the options that it can select and be able to select the best one and, and work on the workflow. So all we have to do is give data and then it works out the details about the algorithm, the selection, how many uh, on the hyperparameters, which hyperparameters to choose. So we're going to be working on a, a test here and show with uh, kind of different, different hyperparameter optimization methods that are available and just show a couple examples in Python just to get us started. So if you'd like to follow along with the code, uh, come here to the course website and you can see these Jupyter Notebooks here. You can either run it in Google Colab or you can get it from GitHub as well. Okay, so here it is and we'll go through some of these examples. You can also run it through your web browser with no uh, installation of Python. So just everything through Google Colab. All right, I wanted to show one other thing just before we get started. Okay, so this is a nice visualization of one of the methods. This is the Bayesian search method where you're searching for an optimum and you have some uncertainty about the parameters. So maybe initially you start over here on the right. You can see it's going to select the point that has the highest acquisition function. And you can see that Bayesian search, okay, it's able to find the global optimum there by looking at this acquisition function and selecting the lowest until it finds the lowest for this, uh, just a single parameter here. Along the x-axis, that's your single parameter for the hyperparameter optimization. But it does require continuous values and you can't parallelize it. Some other drawbacks to Bayesian methods. Okay, so this is a tree structured a uh, partisan estimator, and this is, uh, you can see it's more efficient. Um, I'll show an example with hyperopt where we're gonna use the TPE option. And so this one, you can see how the algorithm works in terms of finding the solution using a tree-based structure. Okay, so uh, some nice articles there. I have a link to it in here as well 
if you'd like to look it up. Okay, so let's come back here. Let's go with a, a first one. We're just going to do a, a simple one, which is a grid search. So we just set a range of possible values, and the algorithm will train and evaluate the model for each combination of these hyperparameter values. Okay, so this one, the grid search, this one can be very computationally expensive, especially when searching over this. You have many different combinations, and so for every combination, let's say you have five of one, four of another, and 10 of the other, then that's gonna be five times four times 10. Uh, so like 200 different um, evaluations, training and evaluations that you have to go through. So, uh, you know, that can be very inefficient and uh, to evaluate all those, especially if you're dealing with very large data sets and they take a long time to train. Another method that does relatively well is easy to parallelize is random search. Okay, so grid search and random search, these are the easiest to parallelize. Bayesian optimization, we talked about that as well. You can also use a genetic algorithm. Um, so this can help to improve and uh, reduce the number of, of uh, evaluations that you need in order to be able to find the global solution. Gradient-based optimization, that helps you find local solutions. And then hyperband as well. That's an idea of stopping early on when you're um, training this hyperparameter optimization. All right, so let's go ahead and just start with a grid search. We're going to use a grid search with cross-validation. And we'll need, first of all, just to import some of our data and packages that we need. So I'm just going to make blobs uh, use the package to, as a data set um, just for make blobs and use our train to split and k-nearest neighbors classifier with our grid search with cross-validation. So I'll just make our blobs. Um, Okay, I'll split the data into 60% for training, 20% for validation, and 20% for test. And the way you do this is you're gonna go ahead and just split it 80-20, first of all, for training and test sets. So I'll do that first. And then we're gonna take our training set and split off an additional 20% for validation. So 80% times 0.25 is 20%. So there's our validation set, the XVAL and the YVAL. Okay, and so there's our data that we have generated. Okay, the next thing we want to do is define the parameter uh, grid for the grid search. So I have number of nearest neighbors. I'll put three, five, seven, and nine. All right, and then here are my weights, uniform or distance and I'll create a k-nearest neighbors classifier. Okay, so let me just show you what this looks like when you're, I have this graphic here that shows k-nearest neighbors. Let's say you have, based on the weight of the animal, you're trying to classify as a dog or a cat. Okay, and here is your training set. And so when you test this one, you would look at, let's say you're looking at two nearest neighbors, then you would say that one is a cat. And then if you look at the two nearest neighbors here, you would say that one is a dog, but it's actually a cat, so you have a misclassification. If you look at the two nearest ones here, then that would be a dog, and so that would be correct. So we can expand the number of nearest neighbors that we'd look at. So let's say we used uh, four instead. Okay, and then we can do weights or distance to determine which ones are our nearest neighbors. So that's the basic algorithm. Those are hyperparameters, just number of neighbors that we use for um, determining the value in the test or validation set. All right, so let's go ahead and create the grid search object. We're going to do grid search, and we'll do k nearest neighbors. There's our param grid that we defined, and then cross-validation is five. So we're going to save uh, one-fifth of the data, so divide it up into five data sets, and then, uh, so that's 20% of your data. In doing um, the this grid search object for cross-validation. Okay, so it takes turns which one is 
test or validation versus, um, you know, the test or sorry, the training. Okay. So there's our grid search. We'll fit the grid search, uh, to, with the date, this data that we have. Okay. So I've created this grid search object and then we'll fit. Now this comes up with a nice, uh, you know, drop down here. It shows us all the options. That was something they added recently with this. Okay. And then let's go ahead and just get our best parameters and score. Okay, so we're looking at the validation accuracy. And then let's get this uh, model on the test set as well. Okay, so here I have a uh, number of neighbors is three and our weights are uniform. And you can see we got a perfect score on this. Okay, so that's a grid-based cross-validation approach. Again, that one isn't very efficient, especially for large uh, sets of values that we need to train, but we can parallelize it very easily. I'll show another package, which is HyperOpt. Uh, this one is probably one of the better known packages for hyperparameter optimization. You also have hyperparameter optimization within the, some of those popular packages as well, such as Keras Tuner or others, but this one's kind of a ge good general purpose one that fits with almost all of the different packages. Okay, so I'm going to pip install hyperopt. If you don't have it yet, just run this to install it. If it's already there, then it'll tell you that it's already satisfied. Okay, then after you're done with that, you only need to do that once. You can comment it out. Okay, so I'm going to import make blobs, accuracy score, train test split, KNR samples classifier. And then from hyperopt, I'm going to get fmin. fmin is the main function minimizer. And then you have this TPE algorithm that I mentioned. And then HP is, uh, we're going to use that as well. Status OK, telling us uh, if it evaluated successfully. Okay, so I'm going to make blobs and there's my data just from this random generation of uh, two features and at five centers. Okay, so I have my train test split here. I'm just going to do a train and test set. Okay, so there's my data. All right, so then I wanted to find the search space for the hyperparameters as well. This is going to be a uniform uh, distribution between 2 and 20 with steps of 1. So I'm going to look for those number of neighbors. And then I'll have weights. So it'll be uniform or distance. Okay, and then I'm going to have my objective function. So this is a thing that you need for the fmin. I'm going to have uh, parameters that come in. Now, one of the things I notice with this package is it returned that as a floating point number. But, you know, the k nearest neighbors algorithm complained. It said it needed to be an integer. So I just changed it to an integer on the input. It's just a dictionary of the different parameter options. All right, I'll feed that into the k nearest neighbors classifier. And then creating it and then fitting a new k nearest neighbors. And then I'll predict. Okay, just using the test data. I could split this out with the validation data and then later do the test data. And then I'll return the loss function. Now in this case, this is a thing that I'm trying to minimize. So if I have accuracy, I just need to make it negative accuracy. So it tries to maximize that. And then I'll just say status OK. So what I'd normally do is, you know, do a try accept in here. If there's an error, then I'd say status is uh, not OK, but I'll just put status OK. I don't think it's going to fail. Okay, so there's my objective function. And now I just need to get the best. I'm going to use this fmin function, and I'll have my objective there. And the space, these are all the different options that I want to evaluate over. That's a dictionary. The algorithm is the TPE. I'll do suggest. And then max evaluations will be 100. And then I'll just print out my best. All right, so this one came up with 6. 
It was a different data set than before. The weights were a zero. Okay, so uh, uniform or distance so it came up with uniform on the weights. Um, and so there's my uh, accuracy as well, 95.5% uh, on the accuracy. Okay, so that's it for hyperparameter optimization. We've showed uh, grid search with cross-validation. And then also we showed hyperopt hyper to do this as well. Uh, again, here is the address that you can go to to get these Jupyter Notebooks. A little bit more description about why we do this data split and and then if we have labels or not we go to unsupervised semi-supervised or supervised learning and description of some of these common methods and the code that's down here as well okay so beyond this we're going to go on to additional content this is hyperparameters over here on the right um, we also have a classification overview, and then we're going to get into some of these algorithms in a little bit more detail. But hyperparameter optimization can really improve the performance of your classifiers or for your regression models because it automates some of the tuning of those. So you can overnight um, you know, set up this hyperparameter optimization to run through all the different parameter uh, cases that you'd want to test and then it'll select the best one so I recommend this approach especially if you are um, you know trying to tune and get more accuracy out of your models